Is that you, Kirk? <laughs> Friend Kirk. You've got to help me. <laughs> You've got to help me. Very mud. <laughs> I have had a terrible misunderstanding with the Alasi pa uh, traders. The traders? Uh, uh, they're out to kill me, Kirk. Fancy that. I happened upon this ship not long ago and dutifully registered as salvage, mind you. In the hold here, I discovered one of these devices in that box over there. When I tried one on a wall, it floated off the grease and dirt. Perfect for cleaning, near as I could see. I peddled a few of these Mud's Miracle Degrimers and everything was going perfectly well. This is an alien race unknown to us, and they are certain to have knowledge new to us. <laughs> Oops! Mud! Do you know what you just did? That knowledge was priceless, and you've just destroyed it forever! You're a disgrace to the entire human race. How dare you, Kirk! I have half a mind to sue you for defamation of character! Oh, what? <laughs> well, wow. I think we know why the Alassie pirates were so interested in finding out where Mud was getting these. Mud's miracle degrimer with lenses attached. You were selling high technology weapons to terrorists and known criminals. Tell me why I shouldn't arrest you on the spot just on general principles. Because I am going to turn over a selection of samples to the Corniforus Life Sciences University. For free? Uh, of course. While you were away, Captain, I made some travel arrangements that I thought you would approve of. Travel arrangements? I think you'll be happy to know that I've arranged for Stella Mudd to meet her long-lost husband on Starbase 7, sir. Approved, Lieutenant. Take us out of here, Mr. Sulu. Feathered Serpent. Captain's Log, Stardate 5097.3. Starfleet reports major military activity in the Klingon sector near Krakur, a planet on the edge of Klingon space. Intelligence indicates that the Klingons are mobilizing a large fleet to search for a renegade who is responsible for a disruption of unknown nature on that planet. Federation sensors have found a faint energy trail leading to the planet Zam-4 in the Digifile system. We have been ordered by Starfleet to track down the source of the energy and discovered what happened on Frakur before the Klingon fleet enters Federation space. If we are not successful, the Federation and the Klingon Empire may find themselves at war once again. Captain's Log, Saving Often, Episode 5. We're here... again. Hello, David. Hi! Uh, you know, Rick, I really like adventure games. How about you? I love adventure games with my heart and with my soul. Um, we are on episode All of them, five. Even. <laughs> we are on episode five. Without of... exception, you love adventure games. <laughs> we are on episode five of Star Trek 25th Anniversary, The Feathered Serpent. Yes, I do love all adventure games. And I like this one too it's gonna be fun there's a bunch of klingons uh we're gonna stop them or something yeah we uh we need to investigate some major military activity in the klingon sector near hakur a planet on the edge of klingon space uh we are going to have to uh travel to uh travel to the digifall system um because we found an energy trail leading to the planet zam 4 so we've been tracked by or ordered by Starfleet to track down the source of the energy and find out what happened. And oh, um, the entire uh, tenuous peace between the Klingons and the Federation uh, could be at risk here. So uh, no pressure. I hope that if we get like too few commendation points, that we're just at, there's a full scale war and it's, it's it's Kirk's fault. Oh, maybe there's branching paths. Wouldn't that be awful? All right, I'm going to pull out my trusty star map, and I am going to look up the Digifall system. They did also mention the Hrakur system, 
but I think they want us to go to Digifall. So that I figure would be the most like productive thing is to investigate the energy source and then go to where the Klingons are amassing because uh, yeah, I, the way this game is set up is like you want to figure out what's going on and then you confront the problem. Yeah, so th that's that seems to be the most likely um, the most likely path. So let's do it. Ooh. Captain, a Klingon battle cruiser has entered the system. Open hailing frequencies. This is Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. Klingon battle cruiser, you are in Federation space. You must leave immediately. I am Commander Taras of the Nisra. We are in pursuit of a genocidal criminal. We are performing an act of mercy in removing him from your space. Naturally, you will remove your vessel from this system. For your own safety, of course. I think we can take care of ourselves, Taraz, which is more than I can say for you, if the Nisra does not leave Federation space at once. You are in direct violation of the Arganian Treaty, mister. If you have a problem, <laughs> have your fleet commander take it up with them. If a Federation criminal were to pass into Klingon space, you'd be saying the same thing to me. Who do you think you're trying to fool, Taraz? Get your ship out of here now. I think All these are the very time, Kirk. Which is more than I can say for you. If they the are. does not leave Federation space at once. My gut says option two because we're citing protocol. Yeah, I. that's what I'm thinking too. Violation of the Arganian Treaty Mystery. If we are not allowed to capture this criminal captain, you may do this for us. We insist that we remain here to monitor the situation, but we will take no action. Provided that you can bring him to us in 12 hours. Agreed. Vessels of war are not allowed in Federation space. You will pull back to the Arganian neutral zone and do so immediately. Agreed. I think we just agree to this. Uh, yeah, that's fair enough, I think. It's, it's, more, it's the most diplomatic thing in this situation to make a concession here. Uh, they might dock us some points for being like, well, that's not protocol, but like, I think this is the best way to actually like get them to cooperate. Yes, but we've gotten a Klingon vessel to agree to stand down and not get into a fight, so uh, that, seems, that seems like a pretty big win to me. They do like fights, from what I understand. Oh, and there goes the JPEG. <laughs> All right. Well, nothing to report, Captain. Let's uh, let's ask Spock about this, or the computer about this place. This is Digifall. Digifall, a system near the Klingon neutral zone. Digifall contains two habitable planets: Digifall Three and Digifall Four. Digifal 3, also known as Zen 4, contains ruins of a civilization that abandoned the planet approximately 20,000 years ago and has been declared a protected world for archaeological reasons. Okay. Zen 3 and 4 um, have a very catty relationship with each other, like, oh, oh, those people on 3, they suck! I have to imagine, so yeah, they probably have, like, you know, annual football games, and it's probably just obnoxious at this point. Nobody probably remembers why they have the rivalry with one another, just that they're different, and uh, that's that's a shame. That's a shame. I mean, the worst part is that they're not really different. They're, like, basically identical planets, but they're, they're, they still despise each other. Yeah, I mean, one wears red and one wears blue, and thus they're going to fight forever. Sam the third planet in the digital system. <laughs> a class See? Not even worth, <laughs> like, <digital>. distinguishing. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, that seems, uh, seems like all that I need to know. Entering standard orbit. So resigned Assemble a landing party. Unless we find the so-called criminal, we're going to war. All right, Rick, we've got 12 hours to finish this episode. Can you imagine <laughs> if somebody orbited Earth and said, all right, you got 12 hours, find the criminal. Well, luckily we beam down next to what I assume is an important pope. It sure looks like it. There is a tall, slender, dark-haired man looking intently at you. Intently? Greetings, my children. I can barely imagine that you have come so far. I am Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Did you know the Klingons are looking for you? I am Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. What did you do to get the Klingons so upset? We're not your children, and we don't appreciate this wild goose chase <laughs> you forced us into. 
I am Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. The Klingons? Amazing. This is the first time one of my missions has produced results so swiftly. Listen, mister. Any missions conducted within Klingon space fully jeopardize the peace. Damn right the results were swift. The Klingons have been raiding colonies looking for you. Listen, mister. Any missions conducted within Klingon space fully jeopardize the peace. I don't know what's going on with, with Father Kirk here. Now listen up, mister. You're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Uh, I guess episode, or choice number one seems to be the most diplomatic. Yeah. Jeopardize the peace? Hardly. Peace is what I preach. I am Quetzalcoatl, as you well know from the proud history of your world. Quetzalcoatl? How fitting you would name yourself after one of the most bloody-handed gods in Earth's history. Bloody-handed? My people love peace. Your followers regularly sacrificed other believers to you after you left, offering you their still-beating hearts. Ha! Huh. You mean your followers <laughs> loved pieces? They slaughtered other believers hoping you'd return. You're being real ornery today, Kurt. <laughs> your followers regularly sacrificed other believers to you after you... Impossible. You must be lying. And then your followers were destroyed, because when white men arrived on that continent, they were believed to be you in your promised return. Your people perverted your teachings, then were destroyed by it. Foul, lying creatures! My gift was wasted upon you! Be gone! Like, we've been told that this guy was literally... <laughs> oh! Uh-oh. <laughs> we are not the inheritors of the noble Aztec world. What you have said has greatly disturbed me. You should not lie so. You shall remain here until you have learned the error of angering Quetzalcoatl. We've known this guy for like 30 seconds and we've established that he is actually an Aztec god. Yeah. Those vines would be useful to escape if we could reach them. Do I look like a Houdini to you? I'm afraid you're going to have to pull the rabbit out of the hat on this one. No enemies in sight, but supplies could be a problem if we don't get out. Can't we just teleport? This particular snake doesn't seem to like your company and moves whenever you get near it. Can you stun it? Oh. Uh, that's a good idea. Let's look at our inventory. Uh, we have all of the bog standard items. Uh, it is logical that an entity that professes to teach peace would render our phasers inoperative. No, we're hmm. fine. Can we actually even contact the Enterprise from here? It looks like a Xamphorian pit snake, a rather common species in this region, noted by galactic herpetologists for their quickness. It is not venomous or dangerous to humans. Fascinating. Our communicators have apparently been rendered ineffective. Interesting. Okay. The vine will not support you. <laughs> Well, then we need to find better vines. There is a vine hanging down into the pit. There's no way that we're getting up that way, Captain. The vine is too weak. Everybody just knows on sight. Yeah. There are several loose vines hanging over the side of the pit out of reach. This is one of them. The vine is attached to a tree above you. Well, can, can I just take it? Can I just have it? Wouldn't it be fun to have a vine? It's a damn snake. Do you know what snake bite does? <laughs> it can ruin your whole day. We are not likely to find a way out of this pit with humor, Doctor. I suggest you concentrate your efforts to the problem at hand. Do they always argue like this, Captain? Well, yes. <laughs> Why would you want to do that? Let's... All right. Well, what do we have here? A light? There is a light suspended from above by a chain. You fail to obtain anything. What else do we have on this screen? Moss? This moss is covered with a very sticky substance. Can we get the moss? Let's try scanning it with our tricorder. 
This variety of moss seems to leave a very sticky resin behind, perhaps to trap the large amounts of pollen from the plants on the surface and use it as a secondary food source. Okay. You fail to obtain anything. But it's sticky. It's moss. Anyone got any rolling stones? Feral red eyes glare out of the dark at you. Wish we had some emeralds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we forgot our honey back on the, the ship. Mm -hmm. I mean, sticky moss should do in a pinch. Hmm. Spock is carefully examining the pit. Can we use, like, our uh, trusty red shirt to grab the snake for us? Maybe he's got better reflexes. Doesn't seem to want to be grabbed, sir. It just slithers back to its hole. There is a tiny hole in the wall at this point. Certainly no human could crawl through here. We could congest the hole somehow um, if we, uh, I don't know, had some kind of inventory that uh, would be relevant. You fail to obtain... You fail to obtain... Like, if we could, like, swab enough moss to plug the hole, that might be a solution, but I don't think it's going to let us... Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to do that? I sure wish I could take some of this moss or maybe this vine. <laughs> Why would you want to have inventory items? You just, like, fill your pockets. There are rocks here quite suitable for picking up and throwing. Ooh. You pick up some rocks from the pile. Let's plug the hole. Maybe toss some, toss some rocks at the vines. All right, we got a snake. This snake is just waiting for a chance to sink its fangs into someone, especially young Starfleet security officers. Well, we better hang on to it then. Mm hmm. Hmm. Save new game. Too many games saved. Too save many games <laughs> saved. Delete previous game. Save new game. Um, got a snake. Let's see what we can do with a snake. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. That's something of a runt, Captain. You should have seen this Rigelian python that Cadet Tyrelli put in the shower at the Academy. 20 meters long. Mm hmm. Well, can I... Get more rocks. I already have rocks. Oh, I already have Ooh. rocks. Yeah, toss them at the vines. Yeah. Toss them at the light. Okay. Fascinating. It did appear to knock the vine down near to the point where one of us can reach it. Didn't they have baseball on Balton? Show us your fastball, Jim. Baseball? No one plays that anymore. Good try, though, sir. That was for the barbaric age of humanity. Mm, yeah, well, um, about a hundred years into the future or so, by the era of Next Generation Deep Space Nine, baseball is very much still a thing, especially on Earth. So, uh, Lieutenant Kramen. Nothing happens. <laughs> Nothing happens. I'm glad I was taught pain nullification <laughs> techniques. <laughs> Does that imply that I actually melted him with a rock? <laughs> Yeah. Good. The vine will not support you. I think we need to get to both vines like can, can, together and maybe like we like twirl them together. There is not enough support, Captain. The probability of getting the vine on the second try was only 36.53%. Well done, Captain. Probability? That was a perfect pitch if I ever saw one. All right! We're on our way! Thank you. 
They really had to animate those glutes. Mm hmm There is nothing at the moment for me to do there. Feral red eyes gl Can we get the chain? I figure we can't- I, I assume it's part of the background. You fail to obtain anything. Do our boys not want to leave? Okay. Oh. They just follow us. Okay. Worried about that trees moss. Sure right would like some you. moss. Trees mm -hmm. to the right of you. Into the valley of trees race the landing party. Trees to the left of you. This is probably all just going to be trees. This tree has been in this jungle for centuries. You look but see nothing of note. Oh. Uh oh. I am Toloxak, priest of Ketsakoka. Only one who knows his ways may approach his holy ground. I will not listen to your deceitful ways. Okay. Towering over your security officer, holding a great spear in his huge hand, the great warrior Tlaxak will let no one pass him. Hmm. Save new game. Replace delete previous replace. We do have a snake. Indeed, you know the ways of Quetzalcoatl, but only a man of courage, one who will shed blood, will pass. Well, Lieutenant, you know what to do. All right. Time for some action. <laughs> Let me show you how we did it at the Academy. Uh, Captain, do you realize how big this guy is? Still inoperative, Captain. Of course. Well, either this Aztec is a real flesh and blood human being, or I'm going to be retired as soon as I get back to the Enterprise. Nothing to report, Captain. So, so what's the implication there that that it is that he is a human? Well, this, 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 yeah, like I guess it, this is somebody who was taken from Earth, and like generations of people have been in service of Quetzalcoatl on this planet. Hmm. Maybe, like they kind of rushed through the whole like revelation that uh, a ancient god on Earth was actually this dude. They, this is honestly pretty common for original series Star Trek. They love to take, like, figures from uh, Earth history and throw them on different planets. I mean, see, for example, Space Abraham Lincoln. Um, so this is, uh, this is pretty much just, you know, standard operating procedure. Uh, anyway, I'm going to throw a rock at him. Is Space Abraham Lincoln distinct from regular Abraham Lincoln, or was Abraham Lincoln from space as presented in Star Trek? Um, as I recall, um, it is uh, it is an alien who is just basically Abraham Lincoln in a chair in space, um, mm -hmm. projecting uh, projecting some Earth history upon himself, probably to appear relatable to the crew of the Enterprise. They loved to do stuff like that. Uh, and it's amazing how many times they found something that looked approximately like 20th century Earth. And uh, I presume also that failing holograms um, of ancient history's characters, including uh, dead presidents, uh, are also distinct from these aliens. Probably, yeah. So <laughs> it's <laughs> essentially this is probably somebody who either is from Earth and is borrowing Aztec uh, legacy, or it's some space alien who heard of Earth and decided, yeah, I'm going to be that Quetzalcoatl guy. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to chuck a rock at this fool. Tw uh, well, twice. Yeah. Tlaxac falls to the ground unconscious. Wow! He dropped a knife, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. You pick up the beautifully crafted knife. I have a feeling I'm going to lose some commendation points for that one. <laughs> a beautifully crafted stone knife inlaid with Aztec patterns. Well, he said we have to shed blood, so I wonder if I have to use this knife on myself. Nothing happens. Okay, how about my red shirt? My Ouch, sir. <laughs> 
You are letting him have it today. The Aztec warrior lies on the ground, unconscious. My only other assumption is if we have some means to sacrifice the snake. Jimmy will be up in about a half hour. If I wake him now, he's liable to retaliate for your thoughtless actions. My thoughtless actions, huh? Maybe there's a better way to do that. I guess we should have a look around here. Primitive lights illuminate this savage scene. Savage scene. This inferior planet. I will not listen to your deceitful ways. I'm really not that anxious to get a good look at it, sir. Indeed, you know the ways of Quetzalcoatl. But only a man of courage, one who will shed blood, will pass. If we throw one rock at him, is that going to give a different verbal response from him? Good idea. I will not listen to your Try the snake now? Oh, now I can't even do that. Get back. You may not pass until you prove your worthiness. You fail to obtain any- <laughs> Pick this guy up, Rick. <laughs> All right, time- Isn't that what they said to David before he fought Goliath? Doctor, may I remind you that David defeated Goliath? Well then, send in David. Captain, I do not think that I can defeat him in personal combat. What about your famous nerve pinch? It is unlikely to work on a man of that size, Doctor. Damn, he noticed. Wow. <laughs> there is nothing at the moment for me to do there. Those, those thick muscled uh, bands in his neck are just going to prevent you from being able to pinch. Yeah. Uh, we can try can scouting, like, west to see if we can get any more inventory items. Yeah, maybe there's another side of the, uh, of the pit. Oh, there's mushrooms here. Trees to the left of you. Oh, no, there's not. Those are trees. Um, Question is, is the screen purely ambient? No okay. luck? No, no luck. Doesn't look like I can uh, go anywhere over here. It's hard to tell, though, because I'm clicking my mouse and he's not moving. This great tree has been in this. He looks at you with a. I certainly see nothing. I failed to see the lock. Can't climb the tree. Feral red eyes glare out of the dark at you. I just look at these screens and ask myself, where is the pixel hunt? <laughs> I am Tolokzak, priest. Yeah, 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 we know. So he's holding a spear here. And when you do toss the rock, he drops the spear at least. Oh. Tulaksak falls to the ground. He dropped a knife, Jim. Well. You pick up the beautifully crafted knife. I don't really see any other way around this. At least not yet. So, uh. It wouldn't be funny if there was nothing over there. <laughs> Below this rock is a large growth of mushrooms. Well, I guess there are mushrooms, just not over there. To obtain anything. <laughs> <laughs> a 
I would strongly recommend against touching these gems. They're highly toxic. Trouzakian mushrooms. Their spores are highly toxic and are released if they are disturbed. Hmm. Interesting. A large fern fans the pathway. You fail to obtain anything. It vaguely resembles the Terran Spanish bayonet. The edges of the leaf are razor sharp and secrete a poisonous resin. Well, I certainly see nothing. Hey, red shirt. He looks at you with a. Have a mushroom. He looks at you with a. Both of those sound like they could theoretically be useful. Yeah, if there was a way to obtain them without hurting ourselves. How about the knife? Nothing happens. Nothing happens. This knife is too beautiful for that. Yeah. Nothing happens. This savage, uh, happens. barbaric, beautiful knife. A pair of eyes are all that you can see of the rest of this creature. Most of it is hidden beneath the murky water. This plant has a rather thick stem and prickly leaves. Save new game. Repeal cancel. Delete. Pre Replace. Got the data. Got the data. Okay, fine. I guess this is the data. I forgot it's not going to ask me for a new save game name. So, <laughs> all right, fine. Whatever. <laughs> The plant is tough. You will need something sharp to cut it. Ooh, oh, we ooh, can ooh, use ooh, this. I know. Everybody gets on their phone simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> this large fern has a rather thick stem and prickly leaves. Okay. Is this the, the same uh, old, but venomous plant that we previously established? I don't think so. There is nothing at the moment from... The tricorder registers a life form, a large marine creature lurking just below the surface of the water. Jim, there's some kind of an aquatic creature down there. I could have told you that. The snake disappears beneath the surface of the water. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. It would appear that the plant secretes a chemical that is a natural repellent to the creature. It has retreated far downstream, Captain. Okay, well... Get that data. Get that data again, and let's get that plant again. And this time, let's not free our snake. It would appear that... And the question is, can we get another plant? We can. The river water is too muddy to get an idea of its depth, or what may be beneath its surface. Are we going to go for a swim? Come on. Okay, well... He's very nervous, Rick. Save new... Replace previous game. I've just got to know. Save cancel. Save new game. Cancel. Sa delete. Interface. Save new game. I don't want... I just gotta know. What happens if we walk across this log? Without taking out the creature. Does the marine creature give us a grab? Captain, it would not be wise to cross while the creature is near. Captain, perhaps I should try to cross first. Great oh. idea. He looks at you with a... He looks at you with a puzzled expression. I'll give it a try, Captain. <laughs> Just 
cross your arms <laughs> and watch. Well, that gets rid of the creature. <laughs> Yum! I'm glad we didn't miss the animation. Captain, it would not. Captain? Can you kill Kirk? No, I guess you can't. You have to very deliberately sacrifice your red shirt. Yeah. You have to give the order yourself. Okay. Uh, analog. Let's go. Worried about needing to go, go, go back and get that moss. Do you think we could get it with a knife? I doubt it, because, like, you're just all... I mean, you can kind of you can scrape it, I guess, but it doesn't make any more sense than anything. Hmm. It is a large cluster of crystals. Hmm. You will need something to pry it loose. I feel like we're going to break the knife doing this. You have one dilithium crystal in raw form. Ooh, dilithium crystal. A dilithium crystal in raw form. Dilithium crystals are the Star Trek MacGuffin that makes everything work. They are batteries. I was wondering, like, how, like, naturally they occur, because it feels like something that would have to be, like, super refined. Yeah, it seems like something that would have to be synthesized in some way, but apparently you can just find them growing on planets. They mm -hmm. appear to be ordinary rocks. Spock's tricorder might say otherwise. Oh, well then, Mr. Spock, by all means. Fascinating. These rocks are limestone, but contain an unusually high content of heavy metals. There are dilithium crystals here, but in a very raw form. You fail to obtain anything. Stalactites descend from the ceiling. I should warn you, the stalactites could collapse quite easily. Any sudden motion could cause large quantities of stalactites to fall on us. Well, isn't this just great? Doctor, I would point out that your voice could also trigger such a collapse. Will you two stop arguing just once? <laughs> then, gentlemen, I would advise you to stop arguing. You know, some shore leave sounds pretty good right now. <laughs> Will you two stop arguing, Je and gentlemen, I would advise you to stop arguing. It would seem to be a prudent course of action, Captain, if Dr. McCoy would agree. That's a fun one more snipe in there. A little bit of role playing, I guess. This is the way that you entered the cave. If you leave this way, the tentacled creature that attacked you will probably try to get a second course for its dinner. Hmm. Watched as you worked through the problems I set in your path. You are a valiant, intelligent species. Please sit down. We have much to discuss. I've had it up to here, with so-called superior beings terrorizing my crew because we're so primitive. Maybe you should see how primitive you are before you go around testing others. One thing first, if you're so peaceful, how come the Aztecs were so violent and aggressive? Yes, I guess we do. Go on. I've had one thing first, if you're so peaceful, how come the Aztecs were so violent and aggressive? I tried to teach them the concept of self-sacrifice. It would appear they did not completely understand my teachings. You are clearly not the liars I thought you to be. Were you telling me the truth about my disciples, that they became ruthless savages? The Federation is not in the business of lying, mister. Absolutely. Your best intentions were changed by the imperfect humans that you left in charge after you departed. Such is the way of our race, I'm afraid. You messed up in a big way. Perhaps you should try following the Prime Directive. <laughs> It changed our lives. <laughs> Have you heard the good news about the Prime Directive? <laughs> Kirk is very snippy in this episode. <laughs> the 
Federation is not in the business. Absolutely. Oh, there's another mister. The Federation is not in the business of lying, mister. <laughs> Absolutely. Your best intentions were changed. I sense truth in this. Perhaps this is what happened to my children on the Klingon world of Rakur, which would explain why they are searching for me. I have clearly abused the power that was given me long ago. You show great wisdom, sir, but your statement implies that you wish to change your condition. Indeed. If my mission of peace was overthrown, then I am no longer worthy of my power. Tell me, has your species made progress in the medical arts? We're a technologically advanced star-faring race. What do you think? <laughs> that we wouldn't have made progress in medicine? <laughs> Mister? <laughs> Mister? With Dr. McCoy, I sometimes wonder, but yes, I would say we have made considerable advances. <laughs> You're not kidding. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, why do you ask? <laughs> yeah, obviously. Look at yes, why do you ask? At the top of my spine is a gland not found in your species. This is the seat of my power. I wish you to remove it, thereby making me immortal. Jim, I'll try, but the physiology is completely alien. You've got to do it, Bones. If the Klingons realize he's no longer a threat to them, perhaps we can avoid a war. Scotty, five to beam up. But what about the moss? <laughs> <laughs> it's the tree in Warcraft all over again. Captain, three Klingon heavy battle cruisers have just entered the system. Admiral Kenka is hailing us, sir. Federation Starship, this is Admiral Vlick Kenka of the Cleata. You harbor a criminal who has caused the destruction of the entire population of Rakkor. We are not prepared to negotiate. You will proceed to Rakkor, where a court of Cleon justice will be convened. If you refuse, we shall destroy you. Admiral Vlick, the criminal of whom you speak is in the middle of a very delicate medical procedure. He cannot be handed over to anyone at this time. I cannot believe Quetzalcoatl's mission to Rakkor would cause the deaths of the entire planet. Why not? Since when do Klingons give orders to Federation officers, Admiral? I realize it's difficult for a Klingon, but don't be a fool. Admiral Vlick, hmm. the criminal of whom you speak, is in the middle of a very delicate medical procedure. I, I would vote he for one. cannot be handed over to anyone at this time. His attempt to corrupt the Empire with his philosophy led to the destruction of all life on Hrakkor. How could a philosophy of peace and non-violence cause the destruction of all life on Hrakkor? We've already illustrated Hrakkor how that could happen. My family mm -hmm. for generations, but even they were corrupted by him. It was a matter of honor that his lies had to be silenced. No matter what the cost. My God, you killed your own people just because they acquired a philosophy that you disagreed with? So you killed them. Your own family. You were responsible for their deaths, not Quetzalcoatl. You murdered them. You're insane. Tell me how much <laughs> do your commanders know about what you did? Or do you need to kill Quetzalcoatl to hide your own deeds? My hmm. God, you killed your own One, people I just guess. because they acquired a philosophy that you disagreed with? It seems the safest. Yeah, it's at least the, le the least condemnatory of all of them. It was that creature's fault. Had he not interfered in our affairs, the people of Rakkor would be alive. Clearly, he is responsible. Message from Starfleet Command. I'll argue this with you later, Flick. Contact your superiors, Kirk. You may be surprised. I have bad news, Captain. The Organians have ruled that Quetzalcoatl's interference in Klingon affairs renders him subject to Klingon law. You are to turn your prisoner over to them at Rakur. Klingon law will permit you to observe or aid in his defense. But be very careful, Jim. Starfleet out. Captain, you cannot turn him over to those butchers. That would be murder. We have no choice, Scotty. I'm afraid Quetzalcoatl has a date with Klingon justice. Set course for Rakur, Mr. Chekhov. I, I don't feel like we owe anything to Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> no. No, we absolutely don't. Captain's Law, we have come to the ruined Klingon planet of Rakur to deliver our guest, the mythical entity Quetzalcoatl, to a Klingon court. Dr. McCoy, Mr. Spock, and Ensign Benny and I have been granted permission by the Organians to witness this trial, which I expect to be a travesty of any meaningful definition of justice. Spock, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the con.
prisoner and his witnesses will stand forth, so the trial may begin. Um, no, first we're gonna save our game. Save new game. <laughs> Cancel. Delete previous game. Save new game. This guy has a habit of meddling on planets and resulting in uh, a lot of bloodshed. Um, very, like, impulsively wants to become mortal with unclear, like, intentions. Like, I guess so that he's neutered, so the Klingons are going to think that he's, you know, not worth killing. But I feel like it's, it's very tenuous. He's already done the deed. Yeah. This just makes it easier to punish him. Yeah. I, uh, hmm. You will not speak. Oh. What <laughs> requested, Kirk? All right. So, Kirk, we finally meet. I had thought it would be in battle, but the universe holds many surprises. There's nothing less appealing than a gloating Klingon, Vlick. Let's get this trial underway. Stick around, Vlick. There are more surprises awaiting you. Why does every Klingon tell me they expected <laughs> to meet me in battle? You really have a one-track mind. There's nothing less appealing than a gloating Klingon flick. Let's get this. So be it. This begins the trial of the entity Quetzalcoatl, who is charged with impersonating a Klingon, stirring dissent, encouraging cowardice, and treason in the highest degree. Those are serious charges, Flick. Should he not be tried by a Klingon high court? He has not demonstrated honor, Kirk. Only a proven warrior may be tried in high court. Principles of honor are not applicable to his defense. I'm a warrior, Vlicht. I hereby intervene for him and demand the honors and responsibilities of a warrior's trial. Then this trial is a mockery for the entire galaxy to see. Oh, well, I'm afraid you're on your own, Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> <Pensacola. laughs> It's the funniest option, at least. It certainly is. I feel like we have to. Uh, of a warrior's trial. We have to agree to trial what, by combat. Is this what the, the Klingons will probably respect? It is. A Federation officer claiming the rights of a Klingon warrior. How dare you insult me, Kirk? I've faced Klingons both in personal and ship-to-ship -ship combat. Your own records will confirm this. If I'm not worthy of their honors, why didn't they kill me? That oversight, Kirk, is easily rectified. You and your three companions may face the test that we set for the Defender. Then we shall see if you are as worthy as a Klingon. I want your word of honor, Vlicht, that Quetzalcoatl will not be harmed while we take these tests. Very well. You have my word. Captain Kalarax, transport them to the test of life. The test of life. Oh, man. What is this? We get logs. Not much is known about Hwakur, Henson. This would appear to be some sort of a mining installation. That creature might be a native life form. A test of courage? That is the Klingon way. I somehow doubt that Vlicht intends for us to survive this, whatever the outcome. We're the only thing that stands between him and the killing of Quetzalcoatl that he can justify. Why should he worry about justification, Captain? He's a Klingon. Murder is as natural to them as breathing. That's not true, Ensign. However, I suspect that Blick's attack on Harkur exceeded his orders. He needs Quetzalcoatl as a scapegoat, and he needs a fair trial to avoid an inquiry of his own actions. And our deaths will be the only way he can get it. Great. All right. Well, I'm, we, got, we got a Zelda dungeon. Save me. We do. Replace, delete. Pre Save new game. I, I need to find out. <laughs> you just let him die? I need to find out what happens if we send Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> oh, well, I'm afraid you're on your own, Quetzalcoatl. I hereby sentence Quetzalcoatl to a coward's death. As for you, Kirk, I expected a more forceful <laughs> response. I had heard you were a worthy opponent. Instead, I see a cringing coward. Leave this place, Kirk. You dishonor it. And Kirk says, uh, I may be cringe, but I am free. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> well, we did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs>
Captain. Message coming in from the Clearta. My dear Captain Kirk, you will be pleased to know that your act of cowardice in returning to your ship in the middle of the trial has found a suitable reward. The traitor has been executed, and this unfortunate business has come to an end. I humbly invite you to leave Klingon space before I use your ship for target practice. All channels closed, Captain. Let us get out of here. Warp 3. Mr. Sulu, back to Federation space. <laughs> well, justice is served. <laughs> you know, these Klingons are... <laughs> we have read your report on the problems at Rakur and evaluate your performance at 39%. You and your crew received zero commendation points. <laughs> I'll be frank, Kirk. Starfleet expects more of you than that. Try to do better on your next assignment. You know, uh, those Klingons <laughs> were awfully... <laughs> they were awfully cantankerous considering how all that they wanted was for us to turn him over. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to this test of life. Now that we've seen those logs. Now that we've seen the alternate universe and the effects of cowardice. These wooden rods are support beams that were not placed. A field of static lightning. It seems to be moving in a purposeful manner. You look but see nothing of note. I want to use the logs and I want to push the buttons. Um. <laughs> there is nothing at the moment for me to do there. There is nothing at the moment for me to do there. No. We can't caber toss it into the control panel. There's nothing at the moment for me to. There's nothing at the moment. There's nothing at the moment. Can we swat the ensign with our <laughs> pole? No effect. No effect. Okay. Well. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> Nothing happened. Oh, of course, Kirk won't spank himself. No effect. I, I love the way you think, uh, but the game doesn't. No effect. Nothing happened. Well, we didn't get to bring our spiny plant or our uh, beautiful knife. So is there a fake, fake, fake wall going on there? Can we use our phasers? Blow it up? Do we... I guess we do have phasers. The wall is resistant to phaser fire. How do you know? <laughs> this creature is composed of electrical fields. I would not recommend approaching it. A metal projectile might disrupt its fields and render it harmless. A metal projectile? These wooden rods are support beams that were not placed. Captain, there is a force field between us and the planet. We have your position at approximately 30 meters beneath the surface of her core, in what appears to be the ruins of an archaeological dig. Keep us informed. We'll help you all we can. We can analyze any data you gather through the main computer. It does not register as a known life form. Hmm. He looks at you with a put. You fail to obtain... It's interesting that this is considered a life form, though. Nobody needs healing, Jim. Why would you want to do that? This section of wall was carved by some sort of plasma field. You fail to obtain any. So here's a thought. This wall um, was carved from the natural rock. We've established that this is a test of courage. Can we just walk into the lightning and prove that we're courageous?
Load a previously saved game. <laughs> As the ensign sure. gets on his phone to put it up on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. All right, that wasn't fruitful, but <laughs> it wasn't even like celebrate. We didn't even get our little like death cue. Yeah. The floor is incomplete, made of unrefined natural rock. If only we had some moss. <laughs> This rock has a high iron content. Ooh! Interesting. You fail to obtain. Let's zap it. Pound it. Do something. Uh, maybe, uh, face? You melt some of the rock. Uh, now try, like, pounding oh. it. Oh, 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 okay. We have to make a hammer. You coat the rod with molten iron. It hardens quickly. As I suspected, Captain, the creature is in stasis. It should awaken in 3.48 days. I bet it'll be mad. You fail to obtain. Oh come on! Captain, we don't get to take the creature with us. I would recommend against disturbing the rod. It could result in awakening the creature or possibly electrocuting you. No. Right. Well, I, I guess we'll just walk through. Maybe. Um. <laughs> Do we need to blast our way through? We do not know the code, Captain. Don't give me a break. Mm. I don't know the code. He's a male human. Oh, I don't want to scan him. You want me to smash it? But that's our only way out of here. Maybe Spock can hack it with his brain. A slightly antiquated Klingon lock mechanism. A slightly antiquated... Uh, can we ask the, the ship? The for the door, keyed to a number sequence. The tricorder is unable to determine the code, but can scan the mechanism. Nothing to report, Captain. An entry coder for... But Nothing can scan report. the mechanism. Well, where's the mechanism? A Klingon entry door. Sl Nothing to report. Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to report. There's nothing there. Uh, can we use our communicator with the door? Captain, there is a force no, anytime that I try to use the communicator, he just calls. Prepare to receive oh. a tricorder message. There is a door with an entry coder here. Try to analyze the circuits and let the main computer crack the code. Scan complete. Main computer has the code. We also read an anomaly. Something else has tapped into the key code. Shall I analyze? I want that door open. Good thought. Yeah, analyze it. <laughs> Affirmative, Uhura. I want that door. Affirmative, Uhura. Sir, we have a secondary code that is nested in the Klingon program. Computer is unable to analyze its function. Shall we broadcast it to you when you activate the keypad? Affirmative. Negative. Transmit the door entry code. Affirmative. <laughs> um. Good luck, Captain. It's like, no, that sounds fake. <laughs> An entry coder for the door. Uh, so how do I... Just use it now? There is nothing at the moment from... There is nothing at the moment from... There is nothing at the moment. Interface issues. I failed to see the... I failed to see... A Klingon entry door. God. Okay. What is this place? This is not Klingon technology, Captain. Even I can see that, you pointy ear freak. Calm Gentlemen, down. I suggest we start trying to find out what this is. I have a feeling we've come someplace Blick wasn't expecting us to go. Interesting. 
Save new replace previous game. Save re Openings on the platform. Place something in these holes. I'm glad the descriptions are giving us hints. Mm -hmm. This large gem appears to be a ruby of unusual size. This large gem This large gem appears This large gem appears to be an emerald of unusual size. This this large gem appears to be a sapphire of unusual size. This is... So this is where they got the spiritual stones to open up the Temple of Time. Obviously. A strange yellow light. Mass produced even. But is Kirk worthy of the Master Sword? No. No, he is not. Let's see what happens if we put one of each color in. That combination is restricted to higher order functions. Neural interlink required. Uh, what? Okay. That was the computer talking to us. Your communicator is not working. Hmm. Uhura was supposed to give us a second code. Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to report. Captain, it seems to be some sort of interface device, but I do not know how to activate it. Not prime for neural interlink. Okay. So, if, look, but see nothing. will the combination of gems like uh, warp us to different places? <sighs> nothing happens. Nothing happens. I think so. Maybe back to a certain pit, filled with moss. <laughs> you fail to obtain. You fail to. Well, now I've got a bunch of gems. Well, let's try going all green for moss. <laughs> of Rakur. For defense, use the light of war. For information, use my light. For transportation, use the light of travel. Sequences are keyed by combinations of crystals. Integrator now active. Hmm. A platform emitting a beam of light. Can we, like, push the gems on the wall? You get no response. I can't seem to interact at all with them. They're not a hotspot no matter which I use. This is like very weird just because like it seems like we're like getting to different routes of a computer menu but we can't interact with it. Yes. With Can we like get Spock to do something maybe? Uh, let me try walking over here. This is Bialbi, the most advanced life form on this world. Thank you for informing us of the situation. It shall be resolved. Admiral Vlicht, this is the defensive system of Rakur. You have engaged in genocidal activities on this world. Have you anything to say before your sentence is passed? Kirk! This is your doing! No, Admiral, it is not. But that will suffice as a final public statement. The sentence is banishment to you and all members of your crew who were involved in this action. You have no right to try me! I have as much right as you to conduct trials on this planet. You showed no justice to your victim. The penalty for injustice is death. Kirk! Hoist on your own petard, Evlicht. Do you want me to help you? You tried to send me to my death. Now you can rot as you get what you deserve. If I have your word that Quetzalcoatl goes free, I'm willing to intervene to save you. 
I'm not sure that we have like any reason to intervene for him either. No. <laughs> no, but <laughs> this is what the game narrative seems to be pointing us towards. I, I feel like this is the option that would best prevent war because I mean yeah. I'm I'm probably thinking through this much deeper than than the game wants me to, but if we are involved in a trial with the Klingons and the Klingons suddenly come up missing or dead, then they could easily like construe that to be an attack by Starfleet, so Yeah, I think that's sound. I'm also having trouble following what's occurred. Like, is this a higher authority than the Klingons of some sort? Like, did you do you know the lore here, or is this just kind of out of left field for you? This too? is out of left field entirely. This is <laughs> this is some ridiculous bullshit that this game has made up. Okay, good to know. Agreed. A life for a life is a just bargain, but his crimes are beyond count. I do not see what can be served by more killing. Idealism, an advanced concept. Naive, perhaps, but charming in its simplicity. Admiral Vlicht, the entity Quetzalcoatl shall be set free. If you ever return to this sector, the sentence shall be carried out. No Klingon vessel may ever return to this world. <sighs> Very well. I agree to your terms. As for you, Captain, you may return. I find your social development most pleasing. I fear that politics will make it impossible. Your planet is in Klingon space. But I don't understand why the Klingons never detected you. Their archaeological digs did come close, Captain, but I am very elusive. I waited and monitored the situation and chose to reveal myself to you. Now you may go. Heed my warning, Vlicht. I shall not be merciful a second time. What's our score? Klingon ship leaving the area. We will be setting course for Digifal. It's the closest thing to a home that Quetzalcoatl has. It would appear everything worked out for the best. Except for the people of Rakur, Mr. Spock. Except for the dead. We have read your report on the problems at Rakur. All right. We evaluate your performance at 100%. You and your crew received four commendation points. A perfect mission, Jim. You are a model for all Starfleet. Oh, the boss. That old devil moon. Message from Starfleet, sir. On screen, Lieutenant. The Enterprise will proceed to the Alpha Proxima system. While the indigenous race on Proxima 3 has not reached a technological level commensurate with entering the Federation, and therefore under the protection of the prime directive of non-interference, we do maintain a discrete monitoring satellite. It has picked up activity from an asteroid in an elliptical orbit. You are to investigate without interfering with life on the planet. All right. <laughs> All right. I, uh... We did it, and uh, we, we didn't... I don't know how we solved that puzzle, but we did it. Oh, man. I, I am... And a perfect score, too, Rick. <laughs> I, I have never in any of the adventure games that I have played in my life, I don't think that I have ever felt as strongly that I did not earn my victory. <laughs> as I do when, when completing a mission in this game. <laughs> oh, David, where do we start? It was like, I don't know, like we get warped to like a pocket dimension where we talk to some sort of god entity, but distinct from, you know, Kexacodal, who is like, you know, just just some kind of asshole immortal who uh, was just meddling and get causing a lot of carnage uh, by accident. Whereas this, this entity seems to be nicer and apparently wanted us to, you know, pick all the green crystals because, you know, moss. <laughs> I, God. I, I I don't even know what to say. That was such a tangled mess of quasi-philosophy and there, there's... Was there any kind of a statement 
made? No. The, uh, why did we have two separate god entities? Why did one want to become mortal? Why was the other one just the entire planet, a, a god computer that... Why? It feels very half-baked. Like, they had some cool ideas, but they, in the span of, you know, um, a hour-long uh, adventure game plot didn't really jive. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I, I come away feeling like I missed so much, but yet there was very precious little to miss. If... So, okay, so was that chamber the result of us getting the second code from Ahura? If we would have, like, blown her off, would we have continued through the Klingon's tests? What would have happened if we would have used other colors of crystals? Why did they require us to put three crystals on there? And why were they all the same color? What are the different combinations? <laughs> How does any of this work? Why did that happen the way that it happened? David, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we... we Count your blessings. Imagine if this we had like struggled with that the way we had with like the eclipse puzzle. But, 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 on top of all of that, <laughs> we cut a hundred percent. We got a perfect score. Yeah, meaning that uh, the Federation smiled when we threw rocks at yes. the um, human. <laughs> I beat up a big old muscle head with a bunch of rocks, and then I went and solved the puzzle that I didn't know was a puzzle. And they're like, "Yeah, Jim, you're you're great. You're Starfleet, dude." You're we, we didn't even need the snake! <laughs> oh my... <laughs> Listen, if you're insatiable, you can always go back and see if we can go through the door without using the secondary code. No. <laughs> you gotta get a perfect score, you can't make me. We, we got a perfect score. This is what the game wanted us to do. <laughs> All right. Anyway, next week next you'll week. get more Star Trek. Next week, I, yeah, it could be worse. It could be, it could be baffling and end up with a like. If I would have done all that and not gotten a perfect score, I feel like I would have been angrier. Like if I would have gotten a sixty percent or something, I would just be mad. Yeah, because you'd be like, okay, well, what do I need to do then to satisfy you? Like, I want at least a B plus. <sighs> Yeah, like, I, no, I did not get 100%. No, no, don't give me an A. I don't deserve that. I did nothing to get that. I I literally just was just uh, picking random numbers on the multiple choice. <laughs> I was cheating off of Spock's test. Don't, no. Uh, please come back next week. Please. I don't even remember. We need the company. Was it the old demon moon? I don't even remember the name of the episode. The old, that old devil moon. That old devil moon. They they dumped all kinds of lore on me at the end there, and my eyes were glazing over because I was still trying to process the end of episode five. All right, come back next week for the old devil moon. This is David. I'm Rick. We're 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 saving off and and we're we're gonna get through this one episode at a time. Yeah, hopefully there's moss on this moon. I hope so. Save early, save often, always take the moss, and please take care of yourselves. See ya.